Hi folks, it's Marlon Legrand here from Flying Fish RC, formerly Just Lost Again RC uh, YouTube channel here. Just thought I'd show you my winter build project here uh, for this uh, 2014 winter building season. It's uh, an oldie, but in my opinion, a plane that I just think is just the most remarkable looking ones out there for a while. It's the ARF uh, Spitfire Mark II uh, 60 size from Hangar 9. I've got, uh, just picked this up here after drooling over it uh, for a number of uh, months at the hobby shop and thinking about it for probably the last year or two as being kind of the size, perfect size aircraft. I've got 60 size uh, aircraft such as the uh, the Hellcat from Hangar 9 and I've got the E-Flight 60E uh, e, uh, Beast that I've been flying here. I've got a 50 size Corsair from Hangar 9. Love them all. This is uh, going to be my first foray out of electrics and into uh, internal combustion motors going to be going with an Evolution 20cc uh, gas motor on this and then uh, of course an 8 channel uh, spectrum receiver with telemetry and uh, I've got the, uh, the aftermarket muffler recommended through the site here as well. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting this thing flying at our local club field. I'm just absolutely pumped about this uh, project and I can't wait to see how it turns out. It's going to be a quick uh, Intro here today, maybe a quick uh, unboxing, and then you're gonna we're going to a video of uh, the build. Thanks. Okay, just a quick little note, folks. Here, if uh, you're into the uh, the uh, box here, the manual comes in a little bag. Within that bag is also the deco sheet for your uh, cockpit. So just make sure you don't lose that when you're doing that. Okay, this is the uh, horizontal stabilizer as well as the rudder. Uh, they come with the uh, CA hinges slotted and the hinges are just in place so you'll have to actually uh, do the proper uh, install of the hinges which is no big deal, a couple of T-pins, pin CA, drill a couple holes, wick it in, good to go. Okay folks, here's the left wing or port wing. Uh, the uh, wings come of course pre-covered uh, in the camel pattern which is really nice with the roundels and all the insignia on them. It comes with a mechanical landing gear, a retractable landing gear built into it. it. will require a low profile high torque servo. I am actually using high tech servos for my flaps, for my ailerons and for uh, the re retractable landing gear I'm actually going with the, uh, the spec'd out GR servo that they call for because I found that uh, on my last project the mechanical servo that I tried to skimp out on uh, didn't have the torque that I needed for this. So I'm going with the uh, the recommended on the retracts. I'm going with a lesser cost one, which is uh, from high tech, uh, quite a bit lesser cost, but it's actually uh, quite good uh, in terms of specs and it was readily available locally here. So of course you've got uh, pockets for the servos. And the flaps themselves are controlled through a lever on the side. And there are split flaps, as you can see, which is so sweet. Okay, so now uh, in the bottom of the box, you get your main aircraft body, of course. Uh, it's just an empty shell uh, with the uh, tubes for the control rods for the elevator and the uh, rudder are in it. All the decals, all the camo from the covering are all built into it. Your motor box is already on there. Uh, pretty much a big chunk of the ready to fly part of it for the almost ready to fly is done which is great if uh, any folks are kit builders uh, from scratch or from long or short kits you know that's a, that's a lot of work to get a plane to that level so uh, I'm really happy I'm not having to do it. It comes with a uh, looks to be a fiberglass front cowl which of course we'll have to I'll have to cut up to accommodate probably the muffler down here and a couple little access holes. Comes with your uh, canopy, the different air scoops, etc. Uh, this being the uh, tank, all the different fixed uh, gears, the, um, all the different control horns, and uh, the uh, engine mount, and odds and end here uh, pieces that you do for uh, details. That's the pilot's seat and the engine uh, exhaust, the full exhaust that come out the side. And of course, there's a little tube in there with all your control rods. I'm going to need all of those for the gas. Um, now the next thing I'll do is I'll show you what kind of electronics I'm putting into it. Okay folks, here's the uh, things that I've purchased so far for this. Uh, first thing you have to do is on that gas tank, it comes ready with uh, a, a gas stopper for a uh, glow setup. 
uh, which is of course what this kit was originally meant for. When you're using gasoline, you need a different kind of stopper on that. So I've replaced it with a, a gas stopper cap that's uh, purchased. It's just a Dubro uh, gas conversion stopper. That's a simple and quick way to make your tank uh, usable. Now the tubing that uh, you'll require for it uh, is different than the tubing that you use on a glow tube or a glow engine as well. But the Evolution 20cc uh, motor apparently comes with this tubing, so I should be good to go. We'll know when my motor gets in in a week or two. I have an AR8000X uh, receiver with one satellite. It's already been uh, set up uh, on, my on my DX8, and it's ready to rock. I'll be using the Spectrum uh, TM1000 telemetry. And uh, for a, a cutoff switch, I have the uh, optional optical electronic ignition kill switch. So this will be able to use one of like the eighth channel on a toggle switch on my radio as a kill switch uh, for my um, for my motor. So that will arm or disarm your motor. I'm using, uh, as I mentioned, uh, cheaper or high-tech uh, kind of equivalent servos for almost everything in the aircraft. I'm using the HS311 for just running the throttle. Uh, for the motor. Got a pair of HS 485 HBs that I'm going to use for my elevator and my rudder. Uh, those are a little bit uh, higher torque, higher uh, strength uh, um, kind of servos. A little bit more money but they're, uh, they're solid and they'll give me the kind of the performance I need for those big uh, and critical control surfaces. I've got four more HS 311s for the flaps and the ailerons. And I'm going with the actual JR791 heavy duty low profile retract servo just because I don't want to fool around with, uh, uh, with uh, kind of the uh, high tech equipment here. One thing you need to know if you're doing this, absolutely have to remember, this, this servo is only rated to work on a 4.8 volt system, not 6 volts, uh, and certainly nothing higher. Um, a lot of these other servos, the high-tech ones and all that, they have multiple dual specs. It will give you a certain spec load at 4.8 volts, a different spec load, a higher spec load at 6 volt systems, and they're very, very adaptable uh, to that. You need to make sure if you're using the recommended JR uh, retract servo that you run it on 4.8 volts. A fellow at the hobby store told me he sold about. Uh, four or five of these I think last uh, year uh, I had guys coming back saying they're not working they're not working they're not working what it was is they're running six volt uh, BECs uh, what I'm going to be using of course is uh, a separate receiver pack it's going to be a 4.8 volt receiver pack a uh, fairly significant uh, uh, size so I can run all my servos including my retract servo and my and my uh, AR8000 off of 4.8 volts. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, of course, going to have a seven uh, two cell lipo for the ignition system for the 20cc motor, sitting probably right on the side beside the uh, fuel tank. So there you go. We're ready to roll for the uh, the build of the Hangar 9 Spitfire Mark II 60 size. I'm pumped. It's going to be a lot of fun.